Hello everyone! Welcome back to another 1v1 battle. This is going to be the Undead Vampire Counts versus the Dwarves. For this one, I'm bringing Helmand Gorst, one of probably the worst heroes in the game, or lords in the game. Um, but the army here, we have four Skeletal Warriors, four Zombies. It's kind of hard to see here, but the four Zombies are over here. Two Skeletal Warriors on the flank, two Skeletal Warriors on the flank. We have the two Puppies, you have a total of three Cryptors, a Mortis Engine, two Necromancers. One has Curse of Years and Invocation of the Heck, the other just has Invocation of the Heck. I try to keep the Necromancers really cheap because I use them as just AoE regeneration and leadership. And then we have two Puppies back in there. For the enemy, they brought two Gyrocopters with Brimstone Guns who are now trying to fire at Helm and Gorst, which I'm okay with. We can regenerate and uh, cast Invocation if it's needed. Then over here we have two Miners, a Long Beard, another Long Beard, but these are the Grumbling Guard, a Thunderer. Nor Grimling's Iron Breakers, and then two Slayers, one of which is the Dragonback Slayers. They're being led by Ungrim Iron Fist, which we haven't seen for a long time, and then also two Rune Smiths. So the opponent deployed originally right here, probably saw my army composition like this and decided to try and pull back right here and they're going to be facing this direction initially they probably thought i would just be coming over the hill like this and then just kind of pile in right here but what i'm actually going to do here is i'm splitting up my force into two parts one part's going to go one part's going to go that way and the other part's going to cross and then go like this uh, because I do not want everybody to come over like this, which through the hill, because obviously that's what my opponent wants. They want me to bunch up right here and then just get crushed by the uh, Thunderers, the Iron Breakers, and, well, other Dowie nastiness. I'm going to keep my puppies back here, and I'm going to wait for the final approach, and I'm going to try and rush them in here to just tie up the Thunderers. That's their uh, goal. The puppies, I believe, are going to rush in through this way with the second part of the army, which is being led by a Necromancer. I think it's about right here that it's split off. And I keep the Mortis Engine, the Cryptors, two Skeletal Warriors, and a Zombie over here with Helm and Gorse. And everything else is going to go... There we go. You can see I'm reassigning orders. Meanwhile, these two Brimstone Guns are still shooting uh, Helm and Gorse. He is regenerating, but eventually, I mean, it will do a lot of damage. And the thing is, they're taking away my regeneration cap. Um, so by the time that the battle is even going to start, Helmet Gorst is going to be close to not being able to regenerate anything else because the Brimstone's guns just uh, destroyed him so much. But when I bring kind of crappy heroes in the Vampire Counts, I usually have other leadership to try and, um, well, you know, support the fact that perhaps Helmet Gorst or, you know, um, not Krell, Kimler will maybe die very quickly, so you kind of need other leadership around. That's why I get multiple Necromancers, just because this guy suck. Uh, he has a unique chariot that has some benefits of the Mortis Engine and benefits of the Corpse Guard. That's kind of cool, but overall, I think Helmet Gorse kind of sucks. Although he does have a Grave Guard slash uh, White King spawn spell, so that's kind of cool. I will actually use that here soon. There goes Invocation of the Heck because he was dropped to 50% health, and I'm getting ready to um, do my final attack here. For some reason, these Thunderers are pointing this way. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe they thought my puppies would come in from behind like this. I'm not, I'm not too sure. So we're going to try and coordinate this. The zombies are very slow. But um, the thing is, I'm not going to be using, obviously, Ray's Dead. Because I don't, I didn't bring anybody with Ray's Dead. Helmet Gorse himself only has, I think, Invocation. No, no, no. He only has uh, the Summon Graveguard spell. I'm trying to keep it as cheap as possible. So I needed to fill my ranks with a bunch of bodies. So that's why I have all the zombies and the Skeletal Warriors. Because I try not to really use Ray's Dead. Because I think it's just too easy. Basically. Um, so here we go. We're getting ready for the final approach. We're going to line up right here and then charge in. I'm actually going to ignore this unit because they, they are not going to micro this unit. So I'm going to just try and ignore it for as long as possible because there's no reason for me to fight it if I don't have to. Um, and then here come the puppies. I want them to try and get into the Thunderers. When I click the attack order, the Thunderers were right here, but they moved up a little bit. So I'm actually going to be intercepted by the Slayers because I'm too busy micromanaging other things right here. Whipping these Skeletal Warriors on the flanks and putting these uh, zombies through here. And they're going to go right up the middle. Going to get the puppies right up through here as well. We're getting the Mortis Engine over here. We already have the Skeletal Warriors and zombies um, engaged against these iron bars uh dragon back slayers because i want to keep them busy and to keep them away from my cryptors who are going to be rushing these thunderers but you can see the opponent is going to just disengage and attack my cryptors so i'm like well damn that didn't work um but for the most part we didn't let the thunderers get off any shots i'm going to pull in some more reinforcements to try and deal with these slayers because they are a definite um problem for my army because we have all the vargles and the cryptors the puppies, in the meantime, are going to be going on this runesmith right here and also dealing damage to the grumbling guard over here along with the Mortis Engine skill to back up. Helm and Gorst is just kind of slowly trucking. He's going to get over here soon and pop his AoE buff that he comes with. Uh, going to be putting the, the Necromancer over here. This Necromancer is going to be hanging out right here. And as long as they are not in combat, their regeneration, Master of the Dead trait, will be procking. So I try to keep them out of combat for as long as possible and I just use them as regeneration platforms. You see the Skeletal Warrior. And again, I'm just ignoring this Miner because there's no reason to fight them right now. I'm just trying to get into the middle because once you get into the Dwarf's middle, they kind of start crumbling. 
That's where they do not want you. Meanwhile, the Brimstone Guns are still shooting Helmet Gore. So you can see he can't regenerate anymore. So it, it does kind of suck. And he hasn't really done too much yet. But he does have a lot of auras that are going to be buffing up the units around him. Regeneration. Uh, I think he has the damage buff that the Mortis Engine has. And then also um, like plus 8 attack and all that. So you can see these uh, Skeletal Warriors now 27 and 31 for the melee stats. Which is pretty good. Vargulf's still just working on this Runesmith trying to take them out. Because the Rune of Wrath and Ruin and other buffs are just terrible. So you want to try and take them out. But there are two. One's over here and one's over here. So that's a nice micro on my opponent's part to make sure that they are separated and trying to buff their entire army. Meanwhile, in the middle, the Norgumi's Iron Breakers are holding off my zombies, and I put the Mortis Engine right in there because they're not really armor piercing unit, and the Mortis Engine can only really be destroyed by armor piercing for the most part. So that's why I put them into the Norgumi's Iron Breakers to try and deal some damage to them there. There goes my Necromancer. He's just going to try to stay out of combat over there. The other one's right over here. Cast a Mass Invocation. Heck, we did cast a Curse Years, you might have seen uh, briefly over this entire area to try and make sure that my Cryptors won the fight against the Dragonback Slayers, and they did that. So the Invocation Neck is going to keep them up here. Uh, meanwhile, the Runesmith, I think, is now dead. Yeah, the Runesmith is now dead. So I sent the puppies against the Norgumi's Iron Breakers briefly. Then I'm going to send them over here against uh, Ungram Iron Fist. Because Ungram is going to get into Helmet Gorst. And I want to try and keep him alive for as long as possible. You can see he doesn't have many hit points left. Meanwhile, on the front, this unit of miners will finally micro road into the battle. So now I'm going to have to deal with them there. This group of zombies was actually able to take out this group of miners. I'm not entirely sure why. I don't remember sending them any assistance, but that's kind of weird. Um, Mortis Engine just doing a lot of AoE damage right in the middle of the army, just where it wants to be. And there's the Brimstone Guns are too busy destroying Helmet Gorse to... It's trying to win away from the battle. They have, like, almost no ammo left, and then they finally take out Helmet Gorse with, like, almost no ammo. So they finally did it. The Brimstone Guns did take out my leader. I have my two puppies on uh, Ungram Iron Fist. But again, I do have leadership that is still nearby with this Necromancer. And where's the other one? Over here now. He's trying to buff up the Cryptors and the Skeletal Warriors over here. And you see the enemy's army doesn't really have that much left. These miners are routing. These miners are about to route. The Iron Breakers have been dealt so much damage because of the Mortis Engine and all the Cryptors and everything. And that is going to be a good game against the Dwarves. Again, the Dalvi do not want you in the center of their formation. That is the last place that they really want you. And that's where I always try to penetrate um, initially. And, and we did. We got the Mortis Engine in there. We ran the three Cryptors. We ran the Puppies in there. And then... It's just, like, because they really need a wall. Uh, that's what they try and do. They, they form a wall to keep enemies out of their squishy bits. But uh, that's why you just need to have the puppies and cryptors just say, like, F that. I'm just going to run over these Dowie because they, like, come up to our ankles. I don't know. What the hell are these things? Anyway, they got beards. Looks weird. Uh, that's what the cryptors and puppies are thinking anyway. But again, good game to my opponent. I hope you enjoyed the Vampire Counts and Helmet Gorse too. You know what Helmet Gorse did? He ran into battle. He cast that's It's a standard die. I can't remember what it was called, but it's like an AoE leadership and like melee defense buff. And then he ran out of battle and got sniped. There you go. Helmet Gorst. Woo! Two thumbs up. Although he did cast a Grave Guard. I think this is the Grave Guard right here. You can see they're uh, starting to crumble. But he, he did do that. And those finished off the Grumbling Guard, I think. So, woo! Helmet Gorst. He's so, he's so cool on his unique chariot. He's so opposite of badass uh but anyway the necromancers are pretty good they were just regenerating uh, again they're not supposed to be in combat they're just mobile platforms uh zombies did pretty well like i said the one zombie looked like they killed the miner i may have missed the part where like vargulf temporarily engaged the minor group and killed them i don't know but it seems weird that a zombie could take on a minor group scouts warriors did what they did the puppies kind of got killed by the slayers but eh, they did all right uh cryptors did their job puppies did their job and the mortis engine just was in the middle of everything doing its aoe damage to any unit nearby and it's it's a fantastic uh unit in this game for my son hw good game to you uncle my fist six kills got a, a couple good hits on the uh, helm and gorst and then was dealing with I think the puppies, as I was killing the runesmith, they were trying to bring it down. It's really weird how Ungram doesn't have bonus versus large. Why don't they give him that? He's almost, like, there's really no point in taking Ungram, really. Um, I just, I just, he's not that great. Like, give him bonus versus largely. Skarsnik has bonus versus large. Why can't a damn Slayer King have bonus versus, it's just, that's just one of those weird things. Maybe they think he's just too overpowered if they gave him that. I don't, I don't know, but he really should get that so he has like a reason to bring him at all um the rune smith 38 kills is pretty good but they did their job buffing and um casting rune of wrath and runes the miners did pretty good got a lot of kills against the zombies and skeletal warriors the grumbling guard i focused down pretty hard but they still netted 72 kills slayers are pretty good and the thunderers i charged immediately and we shut them down i did not want them shooting anything if at all possible the chowercopters did bring down helm and gorse those 
bastards. And then the Norgrimings killed 58. Um, they were fighting They were fighting a lot of bad stuff in the center there. But they held out a long time, as they are expected to. These guys are so damn tanky. But again, good game to my son, HW. Hope you enjoyed. And let's watch slow-ass Helmand Gorst in a cinematic view. Undeath Resurgent. That's the skill I was trying to think of. It's called different things depending on which faction you're playing. There's Standard Die, I think, is the Chaos version. Then Undeath Resurgent is the Undead version. That's what that does. He casts that once. The Dowie stand ready. This dude's Mohawk. He does look cool. Just wish he had bonus versus large. Because then vampire accounts may think twice. If this dude did massive damage versus large units, as I think he should, then that would definitely take out one of the biggest weaknesses dwarves have against vampire accounts. Their biggest weakness is going to be like Cryptors, um, Vargulfs, you know, those big creatures. And if they were being led by a Slayer King, that may make you think twice. Like, eh, maybe I don't bring the Cryptors, because he literally just destroys them in two seconds. I mean, I guess that's what like all their coilers and artillery pieces are supposed to be used for to destroy your big creatures, but it's hard with the way the vampire counts are now because you can have the red duke flying around on a damn hellsteed and just casting raise dead on your artillery and um, your ranged, or just do this, and just charge them really quickly. The puppies. Come on, CA, give the Slayer King some love. There's so many spell effects going on. It's a light show. There's that Curse of Years. You want to know what Helmand Gorse is doing? What are you doing, Helmand? Oh, just getting shot by brimstone guns. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Slowly chugging along. Honestly, he's just like a waste of money. He's kind of a handicap, honestly. <laughs> he's so bad. There we go. Graveguard. Woot. I honestly don't know if the Graveguard Summon is worth it with the new way that summons, you know, just die instantly. I don't know if they're worth the summon. I think they're cost 12 mana in total. I think the Slayer King is going to be coming over here to attack Hellman. There he is. He's slowly walking. And I'm like, back it up, back it up. <laughs> back it up. Hellman saw that Mohawk coming. Too bad it's not going to save him. gonna be it Hellman's horde <laughs> I don't know I may name this video that I'm not you by the time you see this you already know this video's name but anyway hope you enjoyed the battle everybody um again good game to my opponent and I will see you all next time take care